Hi everyone. I would like to focus today on um, AutoCAD 3D and I would like to show you how if you have an arrangement of pipes say something like you see in here and you would like to know what is the interface between this pipe and that pipe what is an easy way to subtract boolean subtract from this element the outline of that element so that you can get the um, the seam of where these pipes are meeting and of course if you have such an interface you could always develop that further into a polyline based on arc length incremental arc length around this pipe so you might even print that and wrap it around that pipe so we won't be doing the development during this blog but we will be seeing how we can um, at least subtract one pipe from the other and how is it that we manage our UCS our UCS systems in 3D and what tools can we use to then subtract from this pipe that pipe so so that we have that seam available to us so just as a background uh, Autodesk or most AutoCAD or most uh, CAD platforms they work with a right hand rectilinear coordinate system where the thumb is in the direction of X, your first finger in the direction of Y, and your middle finger in the direction of Z. And pointing your right hand thumb in any one of these axes, uh, that uh, your fingers wrap in a positive uh, rotation um, sense. So uh, that's just as a background to what the UCS is. You can have multiple U UCSs. So what I've found is let's suppose you have three pipes over here you're not guaranteed that they meet at one spot over there in this case I know they do but we don't know that and also in this one over there so we would like to have some other um, solid that we can create from this pipe remember this pipe is hollow so if we had to subtract say let me just quickly show you if we subtract from this pipe that pipe you can see how it gives the seam but it leaves that bit on the inside over there and that's not what we want so we'd like to have a solid cylinder that we can subtract from that pipe just undo the boolean as well okay that should be fine let's have a look at this element that's fine all right so currently we're in the world coordinate system and I have also set the view cube such that it does not orientate itself to the current UCS so I'm able to reference myself within 3D quite easily um, but here we can see the world coordinate system being shown at the origin and we can see that this pipe is inclined in the XY plane as well as the YZ plane there and the YX plane over there so it's some other arbitrary inclination or um, existing in inclination with respect to the world coordinate system so the first thing that we need is some other curve that we can use to extrude a cylinder along the outside um, surface of this existing pipe so to achieve that what we do is we first of all set our um, <coughs> UCS to a three-point UCS system based on this pipe so an easy way to do that is isolate the pipe using the isolate objects tool over there so we isolate that object now we can see only that pipe then it is quite easy to create a three-dimensional um, UCS or a three-point UCS the first point of the UCS I'm going to choose as the center of this pipe at the bottom that's the origin of the UCS now it works like this the next point that you click will be the direction of the x-axis so I'm going to choose the next point to be exactly in the center of the pipe that's now the x-axis and then okay so it's looking for a point now to um, for the y-axis to exist on and I'm choosing to point it in the z direction so I'm using a relative override um, I'm saying at so from the point and then zero in the X direction based on the previous world coordinate system a zero in the Y direction and one in the Z direction so when I have a look at this carefully and I have a look at the 
um, if I switch out say into the x-ray then remember the view cube is oriented to the world coordinate system but you can see how the xy plane is now directly in line with the center of the pipe because the Y was pointed in the Z direction it should actually be straight up because of that 90 degrees it's in that plane and now I can draw a line from one end to the pipe to the other because the X direction is pointed along there and it must exist on the XY plane so I draw a line from the center of the beginning of the pipe to the center of the other end of the pipe and the reason I do that is so I have a point or a line way to uh, point towards if I would like to um, slice that pipe just now All right. so I need a curve I can of course copy an edge as well it's quite simply here is an edge an existing edge if you had some other funny or strange um, shape at the end of here you might have to slice this pipe vertically or in some other direction before you could get to the uh, defining curve um, so in this case it's very simple it's just a normal pipe so you could in fact copy just that edge over there and copy this edge over here so that you have um, into the same place and then you have a circle which you can extrude or otherwise you could also slice the pipe somewhere and in some cases this is necessary so I'll demonstrate that as well on the solid you can then slice this pipe slice that pipe um, one of the sub commands in the in this case the YZ plane in the YZ plane and then I'm going to choose the midpoint of that line to slice that pipe and keep both sides so that will then generate that curve for me and then once again copy that edge into the same place and then I can join the pipe back together leaving the circle for me to extrude right, so that is another way for you to generate that circle I'm going to just stick to the beginning over here copy the edge on that side of the pipe from the end point to the end point leaves it in place and then we can extrude on the solid menu there's the extrude command and we can extrude that beyond the pipe maybe override it in red so we can differentiate we can then go and end the object isolation and finally we need to boolean subtract that extrusion from the original pipe to get the seam All right, so we go with subtract from this pipe the extrusion that we just created and there we can see how the seam is generated now regardless of the angle or the diameter at which it meets this pipe it's going to generate the seam and you can then develop that further uh, by slicing say this pipe radially and using the incremental arc lengths to measure the uh, distance to the edge of that seam and that will allow you say to print um, one is to one a polynomial that, or a, a, a polyline or a spline that you then generate along that uh, arc length, incremental arc length plotted against the distance up to that point. So once you've plotted that, you can paste it around the pipe um, and then use a grinder, you know, mark it out, use a grinder and another pipe with some, um, with some emery paper or something like that. And you can, with a bit of elbow grease, you can get this curve very nicely manufactured, uh, leaving it for you to then just weld onto this other pipe. So. Um, there are better solutions with, within other software, but this is how we do it in AutoCAD, and I hope you find that useful. Until next time, enjoy your 3D modeling. Um, I know I do, and uh, yeah, keep well.